In many ways, Nazi zombies are the perfect enemy. It's near impossible to feel any empathy towards them or guilt when you plaster their internal organs against a nearby wall. After all, one is a shambling, mindless, foul entity propelled by an abhorrent evil, and the other is a walking corpse. The combination of the two creates an adversary that pretty much any level-headed player can take pleasure in dispatching. Since playing Zombie Army 4 Dead War, I started thinking about the origin of the Nazi zombie and how they owe their decaying existence to the more bizarre, cultish beliefs and conspiracies that surrounded the Nazi party in the 30s and 40s, not to mention the occult implications that have followed the conversation around them into the 21st century. While it's fun to fight through virtual worlds filled with a shambling SS, the idea of an undead Ubermensch has existed since as early as the 1940s, and the connection between dark occultism and the Nazi party has existed for decades longer. Who would have thought a game focused around showcasing the internals of undead craniums would be so thought-provoking? Historian Nicholas Goodrick Clark's book, The Occult Roots of Nazism, discusses the possible links between supposed black magics as well as the racist occult movement of Ariosophy, including the far-fetched belief that the German people were survivors of the lost city of Atlantis. His book also goes on to say that he found that most of the modern mythology surrounding Nazi occultism was sensationalized and under-researched. It's also important to remember that claims such as Hitler being possessed by a demon or that the party was controlled by an unseen cult creates a scapegoat for those evil acts committed by evil people. And as fantastical as this discussion may be, any links between the individuals and actions that plagued our real world should always be considered thus, evil. And that wickedness, be it through the lens of non-fiction or over-the-top tropes, should never be denied. The connection between the occult and Nazism, regardless of how deep that connection went, or as false as it really is, has been a huge springboard for a wide range of fiction and pop culture for decades. From movies, to comic books, to video games, from the mutants and shamblers of the Wolfenstein series, to the boarded up windows of Call of Duty's Nachter and Toten. Or more recently, the leftover corpses of Hitler's Plan Z in Zombie Army 4 Dead War. The first media to connect The Walking Dead with the evil fascist regime was the 1941 American World War II B-movie, King of the Zombies. The plot featured the crashed and stranded occupants of a US plane, a mansion haunted by zombies, and a doctor turned foreign spy engaging in voodoo rituals in an effort to extract war intelligence from a captured US admiral. Pretty much as propaganda cheese as they come. If there's one thing that I wouldn't want to be twice, zombies is both of them. The 1960s saw the release of many more cult B-movies featuring the mindless drones of reanimated Wehrmacht soldiers. The 1966 British science fiction horror The Frozen Dead is based around an unrepentant Nazi scientist stockpiling frozen German soldiers across Europe in order to reanimate them when his superiors deem it necessary, only for the suspended animation to end prematurely, bringing back the soldiers in a state of the aforementioned zombified Nazi. And while not exactly meeting that traditional zombie trope, the decade also saw the release of the widely parodied They Saved Hitler's Brain. Everyone's always in favor of saving Hitler's brain, but when you put it in the body of a great white shark, ooh, suddenly you've gone too far. The premise of a Nazi zombie is hard to really take seriously. It's quite often portrayed as tongue in cheek and as such takes the edge of any real horror that a traditional zombie may instill. But that being said, this particular beast has made its way into some bizarre media in various ways. Such as the awful Sharkenstein, where Nazi scientists tried to experiment with weaponizing dead sharks, the supremely over the top Dead Snow, also featuring the thawed undead, and the, um, uh, I have no idea how to describe it, but of course, there's a Tomb Raider Nazi zombie porn parody, and of course, it has a mummy trying to raise the Fourth Reich. Listen, somebody made that movie, and I learned about it while writing this script, so by God, you have to know about it too. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. When you look beyond the Nazi zombie trope that has featured in many a movie and game, and take into account some of the more, let's say, down-to-earth occult connections, Hundreds, if not thousands, of sources of media owe some element of their narrative inspiration to the fantastical thought that black magic was an influence to the awful events of World War II. Indiana Jones draws from the Reich's obsession with Christian relics like the Spear of Destiny or Holy Lance, objects they were hoping to use as symbols of political power. Themes that are echoed in the movies where such religious artifacts are being sought after for a physical, tangible power, rather than a metaphorical one. 
He chose poorly. Hellboy, the Wolfenstein series, and even Captain America uses the Nazis' connection to the occult and eccentric border sciences to either add a different spin to the big bad, or to create a new wrinkle in their evil and allow for larger feats of heroism when it comes to thwarting their efforts. One of the games that is most well known for Nazi zombies, however, is Call of Duty World at War. World at War's Nazi zombie mode established the formula for the franchise to follow, pitting players against a horde of the undead while wielding an ever-growing arsenal of weapons and power-ups as the game progressed. The popularity of the mode meant that it would go on to feature in many future Call of Duty titles, but would lose the Nazi moniker and instead simply become known as the Zombies mode. That is until the series would return to its roots with Call of Duty World War II. One of the core themes of the Wolfenstein franchise, both old and new, is the blending of the myths of Nazi occultism, technological fringe science, as well as the unfortunately real, awful human experimentation. Horrific undead mutants appeared in the very first Wolfenstein 3D, clad in green with pistols sticking from their chests, created to be very literal killing machines. Part of the plot in the chapter Operation Eisenfaust follows BJ Blazkowicz's destruction of the Nazi plans to create an undead mutant army. The Undead also make an appearance in 2001's Return to Castle Wolfenstein, and once more in the form of Shamblers in 2015's prequel to The New Order, Wolfenstein The Old Blood, a title that played much more on the occult and supernatural elements of the series. Look at that, it's raining Nazis. And as if to showcase the range of the Nazi zombie, they also appear as one of the main enemies in South Park's Stick of Truth, their dialogue being made up of excerpts of Hitler's speeches. And of course, most recently, the inspiration behind this feature, Zombie Army 4 Dead War, which continues on the Sniper Elite-based Zombie Army trilogy, in a world where Hitler unleashed Plan Z and was banished to hell, but his rotting undead continue to roam the world. Of course, the task of emptying their skulls is left to you. Now, I've been a fan of the Sniper Elite series since playing the first on my PlayStation 2 in 2005, and while originally apprehensive about the pivot into the world of a B-movie-esque zombie co-op game, I was pleasantly surprised with the combination of sniper mechanics, X-ray kill cams, and the enjoyment of dispatching Nazi zombie hordes with a certain element of precision. A Nazi zombie antagonist creates a backdrop that allows for a much more obscure and arcane game world, while also feeling like a somewhat familiar setting. A mindless horde is a common theme when it comes to four-player co-op titles, be they Left 4 Dead, Vermintide, or Zombie Army, but each title adds its own wrinkle to the formula. Most recently, that comes in the form of zombie snipers, undead sharks, electric suppressors, and a plethora of B-movie tropes and easter eggs that connect the game to its cult horror roots. Now, if you have some squad mates to team up with, I can heartily recommend trying out the latest entry in all things Nazi zombie dispatching. But considering these Gestapo ghouls have been in our media for around 80 years now, I don't think they're going to go away anytime soon. So with that being said, we may as well enjoy ridding our virtual worlds of the one enemy that really is a delight to destroy.